Okay. So I told you I'd be back. If you watched my last video, then uh, this is number two. So when it's about when you what it's like when you ask Christ into your heart. You know, you hear those words all the time. Ask Christ to come into your heart. Just accept him and ask him to come in. And sometimes it's hard to really grasp the meaning of those words. And people are like, okay, yeah, I did. I have, I have, I have, I have, I have. But when you really do, something happens. And I'm going to give probably the most accurate examples like most imagine this okay so I was talking to my sister earlier and I was trying to and I didn't even see this coming and I was I was explaining I was trying to explain to her what it's like when you accept Christ into your heart and let me remind you that every morning, for the at least for the la especially for the last week, every morning I have asked God to send the Holy Spirit to talk through me, through my in my day. Send the Holy Spirit to please speak through me and work in me every day, uh, through the entire day, so that. I don't ever mislead anybody and I am not setting a bad example. I don't want to ever lead somebody down the wrong road. And I want to uh I want to do God's work. I want to I work for him. I want to work for him. I want to bring people back to him. So anyways, I'm talking to my sister. And when I was, when I was trying to explain to her, I also heard what was being said. I mean, when God had the Holy Spirit speak through me to my sister, I also, I sat down and I was quiet and I heard something that I didn't hear before. And all glory to God, no glory to me. I don't, I do not want that. So, I'm not taking any glory from God. This is all to Him. Um, so, anyways, I'm explaining this to her. So, and I'm going to say I. I, because it's just easier and it comes out just a little smoother. So, I was telling her. I heard myself. I heard me tell my, tell my sister I was... I was telling her that, okay, so picture, when you ask God, and when you ask Christ to come into your heart, you're asking him to come into your heart. Christ, please, please come into my heart. And imagine at this point, you're, you're, you, you're blind, you're deaf, you can't smell, you can't taste, you can't feel. All, all your senses are shut down. You don't know it, but you just you just know that you exist somehow. You just know that you exist. And you're in this room, which is your house, your heart. You know you exist, but um but you you know something's wrong, something ain't right. So you ask Christ, you ask Christ to come into your house, so you ask him in, what does he do? He's like, all right, come on. I'm coming on in. And remember, Jesus Christ was a carpenter, still is a carpenter. He builds things. Can you imagine what he can build? Imagine whatever he builds is excellent. 
So you ask him in. He comes in and he's like, I'm going to remodel this entire place. And he's talking about your heart. You're going to, I'm going to remodel this entire place. So I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to pull this down. We're going to knock all this down. We're going to do this. I got plans for it in here. So, when he first starts to remodel, it's dark in there. Because remember, you're blind. So, what does he first do? He's like, first thing I'm going to do when I come in here, and I'm going to rip down these shades. I'm going to rip down these blinds. I'm pulling down. I'm opening up these windows. I'm going to shed some light in here. So, he's ripping them down. And all of a sudden, boom, light. There's light. And it was pitch black first. All of a sudden, he's ripping these down. And all of a sudden, here comes light right on in. And all of a sudden, you can see. You're able to see. Your first sense. You can see. And you're looking. And... You're seeing and you're realizing what you've been living in this entire time. You're like, can you imagine? Just try to imagine the most disgusting thing. What grosses you out the most? Bugs? Crap. Nasty. Like, just everything nasty you can think of you're stepping in it it's on the walls it's dripping off the ceiling it's all around you it's on you now so your first sense is awakened i can see and i don't like what i see and i don't like i don't like it at all it's around me and it's on me and i don't like it like what is this stuff so, the first one's awakened because he opened, he pulled the blinds off, he pulled the shades off. Boom, he can see. All of a sudden, your hearing kicks in. He goes, Now, listen to this. I'm going to give you some hearing. I'm going to turn it up for you. It's like, whew. all of a sudden, you're hearing things that there's sound. There's things that, you like, what is this? What's going on? What is this awful sound that I am hearing? What is this? You're, you're realizing that you what you've been, the noise that's been around you, the filthy talk that's been around you, the, the poison that you've been living in and surrounded by. You're hearing it. You're seeing it. And you're like, and then all of a sudden your, your smell kicks in. He gives you smell. It's like, and you're like, I can smell what I've been stepping in this entire time. What's on my walls, I can smell it. I see it. I smell it, and it stinks, and it's disgusting, and you're grossed out. Yeah, you are. You're like, again, yo, I, I've been living in this. This is what I have been so blind. I have been so deaf. I have I've been without smell. And then what's the next one? Uh, taste. All of a sudden, your taste kicks in, and... You taste what has been coming out of your mouth this entire time. You taste what you've been putting in. You taste what you've been pouring out. And it don't taste good. You're like, wow, no way. I just, I've, I've had that in my mouth this entire time. That tastes awful. I've let this in, into my body. And also, I'm letting it out into the world, and I'm just like, I'm giving it to everybody else also. It tastes awful. But, and then all of a sudden, you can feel a sense of touch. 
you are able to feel everything around you. You can feel it. it's nasty. It's uh, and all of a sudden you you're feeling you're feeling what you've been doing this entire time. You you feel convict you feel conviction. Conviction is a blessing. Conviction lets you know what you've been doing wrong. It's the greatest blessing because when you realize what you've been doing wrong this entire time, you, you're able to recognize it and you fall to your knees. You, uh, you're not even pushed to your knees. You literally can't help but to fall to your knees and um, just cry. I'm sorry. I didn't realize that this is what my house looked like. I can't believe I have been living in this. I didn't realize the filth that was coming out of my mouth. I can't believe what I was letting into my body. I'm sorry for the hurt that I've caused others because I've been so blind and deaf. I'm sorry that I wasn't able to smell the death around me and the death that I was stepping in myself. And Jesus is like, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you recognize it so that and open up your eyes, take the shades off here so that we can get to work. We got cleaning to do. Hey, you just opened up your home. To the best carpenter, the best cleaner. I'm about to make it shine up in here. And guess what? He sends the Holy Spirit to come up in and they just go to town cleaning. And you are full of joy. You can feel yourself be clean, be being cleansed. And when you cry. When you cry for things that you... That's when you drop to your knees. You just can't help it. You fall. You're not being pushed to your knees. You, but you fall to your knees. Automatically. Naturally. And you. And that's when you ask God for forgiveness. It just comes out. You, you beg. You, I'm sorry. I am sorry. I have done this. This is what I have been doing this entire time. It just flows out of your mouth. And he gives you new eyes, new ears, a new sense of taste, a new sense of smell, a sense of touch, feeling. He gives it all brand new to you. And you can't help but to want to. You can. Everything smells different. It smells beautiful all of a sudden because your house is clean. It's getting cleaned up in here. It's getting cleaned. It's getting clean, and everything is beautiful. It's, that doesn't mean hard times ain't going to come, because they will come. But as long as you have your armor on, the armor of Jesus Christ, his shield, and his sword, which is his word, you will be able to slay whatever comes at you. And whatever tries to come at you and hit you, you will have his armor on. You got a clean house. You're getting cleaned up. That's what it's like when you ask Christ into your heart. A complete turnaround. And I promise you, if you truly believe in him and what he did, gospel, he was buried he died, was buried, and resurrected three days later. 1 Corinthians 15, verses four, 1 through 4. Read it. Look it up. Hold on, babe. You won't regret it. Ask him in and watch how he cleans your house. That's what he means when he says, make sure your house is clean. He's not talking about the house, your earthly house. He's talking about your, your heart. I love you guys, and 
I hope this has helped somebody because when I, I was telling my sister about it, which wasn't me, which was with the Holy Spirit, and I sat back and I was listening, I was like, oh, really? That's awesome. I got a lot from it. It was great. Can't think if I'm missing anything, but if I am, I'll make another video. I love you guys.